Hello everyone. I am Dr. E. Naresh Kumar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Insta Perinatical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to discuss definitions and terminology in the Module 2, that means DC uh, theorems, network theorems and network topology. Now, total 15 definitions in this module. So, network theorems and network topology in the Module 2. So, first mention what do what we do in the superposition theorem while considering source all uh, other voltage sources are so here voltage sources are replaced by short circuit and current sources are replaced by sorry not open circuit here this is the circuit so to apply the superposition theorem at least uh, we need uh, two sources it can be applicable multi source network not for single source network so there must be uh, at least two sources either voltage source or current sources so here while considering uh, individual responses total response equals to i equals to i dash plus i double dash so these are the individual responses this one is the total response so superposition theorem states that total response equals to some of the individual responses so here while uh, calculating the individual responses all sources must be only one source is active and remaining sources are deactive so here remaining sources if it is voltage source that voltage source should be short circuited and current source should be open circuited here if you see here in the superposition theorem while considering source all other voltage sources are replaced by short circuit and current source is replaced by open circuit second question is same thing so mention what we uh, do in the superposition theorem while considering source all other so considering source means individual response while calculating the only one source is active and remaining all other sources are deactive so all other current sources are replaced by open circuit so this one voltage sources are replaced by short circuit and current sources are replaced by open circuit because current source is deactive means so deactive means zero ampere zero ampere condition is only at open circuit condition and voltage source is deactive means that is zero volts that is at short circuit condition only zero volts occurs next third third question can we use uh, Thevenin's theorem on circuit containing BJT. So, circuit containing BJT means this is non-linear element. BJT, diode, FET, uh, op-amps, all these are non-linear elements. So, superposition theorem limitation is it cannot be applicable for non-linear networks means which are having non-linear elements. So, it can be applicable only for linear networks, linear elements. So, here we can use superposition only for linear networks, not for non-linear networks, which are having non-linear elements. So, non-linear elements, so linear elements are resistors, inductors and capacitors and voltage source and current source. The combination of these element circuits only we can apply Thevenin's theorem, not for uh, non-linear networks, not uh, non-linear, BJT is a non-linear element, so we cannot apply superposition theorem such type of circuits next so which is known as the dual Thevenin's theorem so dual Thevenin's theorem means here in the Thevenin's theorem voltage source so a, a number of voltage sources current sources and resistors are replaced by single equivalent circuit that single equivalent circuit consists of one voltage source and one resistance RTH and this one voltage source is VTH and reconnect the load resistance this is a RL so this is a single equivalent circuit and for this particular uh, Thevenin's equivalent circuit the equivalent uh, dual circuit is a current source in parallel with the resistance voltage source in series with resistance and current source in parallel with the resistance that is IN and RL so dual Thevenin's theorem is known as the 
Norton's theorem. So same way, number of voltage, same statement, only the difference of single equivalent circuit consists of one voltage source in series with resistance and single in case of Norton's theorem, single equivalent circuit consists of current source in parallel with resistance that is and again reconnect the load. So this circuit and this circuit actual given circuit is same. Here these two are dual circuit. So here so Norton's theorem is also known as the dual theorem of evidence theorem, Norton's theorem and this one. So in the Norton's theorem, we can find out the short circuit current. So this one and dual of open circuit. So this is a dual of open circuit current and this one is the short circuit current. Here IN can be calculated when remove the load resistance from a given circuit, short the load terminal, calculate the short circuit current. The short circuit current is known as this IN. Same way here in the Thevenin's theorem, remove the load resistance from a given circuit, short the, uh, open the uh, load, ter uh, load terminal and calculate that open circuit voltage. Open circuit voltage is known as VTH. That open circuit voltage and here short circuit current. So these are dual elements. So then Norton's theorem is is the dual of Thevenin's theorem. Now, fifth one, mention the procedure to obtain the Norton's current. So, how you will obtain it? Suppose this is the circuit. V, R1, R2, R3 and this one is the RL. Here you need to determine the current flowing through the RL. So, for this particular case, so here in the Norton's current means, so this circuit should be replaced by current source in parallel with the resistance. This is Rn, this is In. Again, reconnect the load resistance. If you calculate this one, I Rl, this one, this is the Rl. So to determine this In, Norton's current, so there is a, there are total four steps. So first one is the three steps. So first one is the remove the load resistance from a given circuit. Remove the RL from a given circuit. And second one is the, so short the load terminals. Short the load terminals. And calculate short circuit current. And fourth one is the, that short circuit current is known as I N. So that I N is to be substituted in this. So remove the load resistance from a given circuit, short the load terminals, calculate the short circuit current using any method, node analysis method, mesh analysis method, any network reduction technique. After that, the short circuit current is known as the Norton's current. So here, if you see the Norton's current is obtained by short the specified terminal that are load terminals and the short circuit current. It is not open circuit current. Open circuit current is always zero because of uh, because if it is specified get open circuit, then it currents is zero. So this so remove the load resistance from a given circuit, short the load terminals and calculate the open circuit voltage. Next mention the procedure to same thing, same Norton's this this one and this one i i i n in the fifth question and this is the r n there are steps same thing so first one is the remove the load resistance from a given circuit remove the load resistance from a given circuit and short the voltage source so if here in this v and this is r l r1 r2 r3 and this is the v so remove the load resistance from a given circuit and short the voltage source. So voltage source is replaced by short circuit if any current source. If any current source that is replaced by open circuit step 3 and fourth one calculate R equivalent that R equivalent is known as Rn. So that Rn should be substituted here. Remove the load resistance from a given circuit. Voltage source is replaced by short circuit and current source is replaced by open circuit. And then calculate the R equivalent. So that R equivalent is known as Norton's resistance. So to obtain the Norton's resistance, all voltage sources are short circuited and all current sources are open circuited and remove the load resistance. Then calculate the R equivalent. That R equivalent is known as the Norton's resistance. Next seventh question. 
can we use Norton's theorem on uh, circuit consisting of BJT? Same thing. So super um, superposition theorem, Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem. We cannot apply for the nonlinear network. Here BJT is a nonlinear element. So now for nonlinear elements which uh, which are having circuits such type of uh, um, such type of networks are known as nonlinear networks for that particular case. Uh, networks we cannot apply superposition theorem, Thevenin's theorem, reciprocity theorem, Norton's theorem also we cannot apply. So here BJT. So we can use networks theorem only for linear networks, not for nonlinear network. BJT is a nonlinear network, and hence we cannot apply Norton's theorem for it. Next question. The maximum power drawn from the source depending on. So here maximum power. This is the circuit. So this is the source Vs and this is the Rs and this is the load resistance. So here maximum power. What is the maximum power transfer theorem statements? Maximum power transfer theorem states that when load resistance equals to source resistance, then maximum power transfer to the load Rs equals to Rn. And then at this condition, here there is a P max. So that P maximum equals Vs square by 4 Rn. So the maximum power drawn from the source depending on this value is depending on the load resistance or source resistance. So we can say the maximum power depending on the load resistance and this value, source value. Next, ninth question. Mention the condition for maximum power delivered to the circuit, in the circuit. So when load resistance equals to source resistance, then maximum power transfer to the load. That is a condition Rs equals to Rs. So here the, in the circuit drawn maximum power only when source resistance equals to the load resistance. Rs equals to Rl and then maximum power is transferred to the load. That maximum power equals to Vs square by 4 Rl. So this is the condition according to the maximum power transfer theorem statement. Next, tenth one. Define the directed graph. If draw, draw in the graph branches having the directions. So that uh, such type of graph is known as the uh, directed graph or uh, oriented graph. So if any every branch of graph having direction, so then the graph is said to be directed graph. If graph that does not have any direction, then uh, such type of uh, su such type of graph is known as undirected graph, unoriented graph. If suppose this is the graph A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is unoriented graph, undirected graph. So no branch having here um, uh, directions. So if you mention the direction 1, 2, 3, this direction, this direction. So here in this case, all branches having the direction. So here every branch, every one, two, three, four, five branches having directions. So then this graph is known as directed graph. If in the previous case, a diagram is undirected graph, unoriented graph. Oriented graph, unoriented graph, directed graph, undirected graph. Next 11th one, what if two branches of graph across each other? So then the graph is called as planar graph. So if A, that is planar graph. If graph can be drawn on plane surface such that no two branches of the graph across each other, then the graph is known as planar graph. Next, loops. Uh, which contains only one link are dependent on are called so basic loops which contains only one link are dependent are known as basic loops next if graph consists of five nodes and the number of ticks in a tree so this is the tree so this is the graph so A, B, C, D. So here, so graph consists of five nodes. So five nodes means D. 
So now here, so the number of twigs in a tree. So we can calculate the twig formula. So number of twigs equals to number of nodes minus one. Here number of nodes are five. So here number of nodes are five. On substituting in the equation, the number of twigs equals to five. If suppose if I will draw here one, two, three, A, B, C, D. Sorry, this is E. This is E and this is A. Here total possible number of nodes are five and uh, trees are tree. How many trees here? In this tree, this is the one tree. Tree means there is there should not be any closed path. There must be all nodes. So such type of graph is known as uh, tree. So here uh, tree branches are known as twigs. Here A B B A and C. Uh, sorry, this is B D A B B D uh, C D and C. E. So total four twigs. So here this five nodes and from this n minus one are twigs. So five minus one, so it can be possible. Thirteen to one, fourteen to one. Tie set. What do you mean by tie set? So the tie set definition, the fundamental loop formed by one link that has unique, unique path, unique path in the tree joining two nodes of the links. So this is loop is known as fundamental loop. So fundamental loop is formed by one loop, which is having only one uh, unique uh, unique path. So in the tree joining two nodes. Next, last fifteenth one, the max uh, the matrix formed by link branches of tie set matrix is known as identity matrix. The matrix formed by link currents that will be known uh, that is known as identity matrix. So these are total fifteen questions in the second module DC um, DC networks and network topology. Thank you. Thank you very much to you all. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.